If there's a rock probably the size as that grandstand there, it was an obstacle to build a racetrack around. So obviously it's been quite a drastic change, obviously from when it first started. Oh, yeah. If you say the last five years have been very drastic in the changing of the racing, yep. obviously since the 60s it's changed even more dramatically. How do you see it changing in the future? Um, I don't know uh, at this particular time how the future is. Uh, it's, it's not looking really good. Uh, one of the things is the cost, is it's cost a lot of money to run one of these cars. And uh, the competition is probably, the budgets are not that good. So I'm not sure. Right now it's, it's kind of a gray area for me. I'm hoping we can keep it going. Uh, hopefully everything will work out for us anyway. Number one in front of the 89, Sean Chenoweth. Chenoweth giving chase to the defending late model and Grisdale Triple Crown Champion down the back straight away. Gary Elliott up to third, Jason Shaw in fourth, Kenny Fourth rounding out the top five. marked the 50th anniversary of Flamborough Speedway. Frank Caselli and your brother own this place. So tell me a little bit about when you guys became the owners. Uh, we got involved in uh, stock car racing uh, back in 1972. It was the fall of 72 that we actually bought Flamborough Speedway and uh, in the, the following year, 1973, we actually started the uh, racing program. Uh, being uh, my brother and I both being mechanics, uh, we we're always involved or were interested in auto racing. So this came as a you know as a f first class thing to do, and uh, we've been doing it since since the 1973 till today. So how has things changed since you and your brother took over the ownership of Flamborough Speedway? Uh, things uh, have just got more expensive. Uh, the drivers themselves, they spent a, a lot more money on the cars and of course they're sort of dwindling down the numbers because of the expense. Um, other than that, the racing is still good. Uh, it's getting faster and faster every year it seems like and uh, they're building rockets instead of race cars. Do you see things, do, do racers, like are they always trying to push the, push the envelope and oh, try yes. and, and, and try and to yeah. be that much better? Yeah. Are, there, are there regulations or anything like that that you have to put in place to say, you know, you can only race this way or yeah. with this kind of? Well, we try to regulate as much as we can, but like I said, like you just said it, they, they push the envelope to the, as, as much as they can. Uh, I'm not saying they're cheating or anything, but they, they know how to read those rules and just go on that fine line. Where yeah. do you see Flamborough Speedway going? Uh, hopefully uh, it'll be here forever. I uh, hope I live that long. And I'd like to see these stands full, uh, like the way it used to be in the old days. It was really a place to come. Yeah, right. And yeah. Come for a family, like would it be families or would it be like it's, it's all, or? This is all family entertainment. Uh, we get uh, from even even kids. Uh, some some of the some of the people that come here, they bring their young kids. They're just you know a few weeks old sometimes, you know, and they got them all bundled up and they're watching the races. Well, Frank, yeah. thank you so much for letting us come in and learn a little bit about Flamborough Speedway's history, yeah. and thank you for tuning into Walking in the Past. Join us next time when we take another stroll through another event in history. Thanks for taking a walk through history with us on Walking in the Past. Join us next time when we stroll through another piece of Halton's history.